So back when we got information on Toto's backstory, we know that it somehow got linked to this woman that, you know, after he like got in a fight with some dude down by like a river, he, you know, this woman came up and asked him what type of girl he's into, and that mysterious character was then established. We see that after Ghetto's whole like issues and, and, and just kind of like coming over the gaps between like where him and his friends are standing and his his dislike of non-shamans he ends up running into this woman and she I, what i'm wondering right now a little bit it she seems like a good character but there are some aspects that make me a little bit wonder if that's going to stay true i think it's i think she's going to stay good um overall uh, my guess is that you know leaning towards that she's good it was just the unfortunate words that she had it ended up pushing Ghetto into becoming this villain character. So you know, we know he's talking, he's even talking to Ibarra. And they were kind of just trying to figure out, you know, not even really they. It's it's just been Ghetto trying to figure out stuff about himself and, you know, talking to other people that he's been trying to explore. But then we get this character um, revealed. She's a special grade. So but what's funny is I was uh, recently, like, wondering about the special grades and... One of my friends after this chapter pointed out that she was on uh, one of the color pages from a couple chapters ago and it showed the four special grades. It showed Ghetto, uh, Satoru, Yuta, and this character, Yuki. And I didn't notice that, to be perfectly honest, when uh, when I was reviewing it at that chapter. And so I'm very, very happy to know that it was, you know, hinted at and, you know, just one of those things that you miss uh, just because it added for the extra surprise of this character. And I, I actually kind of chuckled because her name, Yuki Tsukumo, reminded me of... Because there's multiple Yu characters now. There's Yuji, Yuta, Yuki, Yuko. And it's funny because um, I'm also a big fan of Yu-Gi-Oh! And the thing about Yu-Gi-Oh! is there's a... You know, all the main characters have Yu in their name. You have Yugi. Uh, Jaden's is... No, Jaden or Judai. But his is in his last name with Yuki. Uh, Yusei, Yuma, Yuya, Yusaku... Um, Yusaku and uh, the the fourth one, Yuma, is named Yuma Tsukumo, and here we have Yuki Tsukumo, which I just thought was kind of interesting, but unrelated. Anyway, she's like discussing with him after you know she reveals that she is the fourth. Uh, she is one of the special grades. At this time, there were only three special grade humans. She looked really happy after she revealed it because she knew she was going to get some praise. But uh, she says that she's pretty much the special grade that doesn't go on missions, kind of just does her own thing and. Even though she doesn't like the uh, Jujutsu College, she, her like, core thing is, with the college, they want to go treat the symptoms. You know, they want to deal with curses after they've shown up. What she wants to do is is take care of the cause of uh, the curses. Because the way that the curses work is they're spawned from, like, cursed energy and whatnot, like, leaking out from humans. And it, it's because of non-shamans that it's created, because she explains how... Uh, you know, you, when you have a, somebody who's not a shaman, you know, they have cursed energy, it just kind of like naturally just, it just leaves their body. It just all leaves and goes somewhere and that eventually becomes a curse. With a shaman, you know, they, you can control cursed energy to a degree. And because of that, they have like, you know, they, the way they look at it, it's like, a, a, you know, a person you know, radiating the energy. You have non-shaman, just nothing, no control it's going, it's going away, whereas a shaman instead of like that energy going out because they can control it, it just kind of confines into their body and just sticks with them. So all that energy that could become a cursed spirit uh, ends up just kind of, you know, staying with them. It's their power source. And she says uh, pretty much like shamans actually can't create uh, curses that way unless they die with like a, a vengeful mentality. So which is really cool because this means that whenever some uh, like shaman dies, they could end up creating like some you know evil creature version of you know either themselves or you know something that they thought about in life. Like uh, you know eventually when we uh, get to the point where Geta will die, it, it could be like a you know a second coming. Like he will be revived as uh, you know well, not really him but like his intent revived as a, a full cursed spirit, which would be really cool. And I imagine, like, a, a cursed spirit made from a special grade is probably, like, going to be crazy. But he's explaining how, uh, really, there's two ways that you could do, you know, you could do away with the creation of cursed spirits. That being one, make it so all of humanity loses their cursed energy. Because then you're just normal humans, 
and then the, the cursed energy from your bodies won't exist. It won't turn into curses. Everyone becomes just voided out. Or you make it so all of humanity can control their cursed energy. So everyone becomes a shaman. And because of that, obviously, the only way that, that uh, you would have cursed spirits is if, you know, they were intentionally created or just, like, negatively by accident created whenever a shaman dies. And she says, like, essentially, also, we got a name for Papagoro. His name is uh, Toji. Toji Zenin, and he was the only person that she met that had absolutely zero cursed energy. And because he had zero cursed energy, uh, you know, it, it's like he gained like a resistance to curses, and he ended up like, like his physical prowess just exceeded far beyond a normal human. He was still able to sense, see uh, cursed spirits, you know, he, like his five senses still could interact with them. They were still like normal beings to him. He just didn't have any powers. And so, like, he was, like, a cur he was pretty much a, a different breed of shaman, all of, uh, like, all of in itself, which is really intriguing, because this opens up a possible field of, like, new classes, and maybe it's not going to be only him, it could be characters, you know, a couple down the line, maybe that follow in his footsteps, but then we get a little note from, uh, oh, she's, like, talking about the other person, it's a little, it's a little mocky, a little mocky in her. Her sadness now that she, uh, you know, she's gonna end up falling up in that line. Hopefully, much better than uh, now. We don't have to call him Papa Goro anymore. Battle Dad is just Toji, and uh, from this, it, it's really what ends up pushing Ghetto's like mindset. I would like to believe that she's not doing this knowing what he's like and what he's going through, because for him, you gotta keep in mind for him. He, he's mad. He's mad at all the non-shamans because of the way that, like, the, the, the shamans go out and die because of them. And, like, there's a, there's a part afterwards where, uh, after he's talking to her, he said, like, what if they killed all the non-shamans? And that obviously would work. And she's like, but that, that's too, that's a bit of a crazy radical plan for me. Uh, and anybody left, like, during this, like, their survival instincts and they would kick in and, like, awaken their own shaman power. So, you'd pretty much be killing off all of the source problems while any of the source problems that you know are shocked from this from you know and just activate all instinctual survival abilities would gain the powers anyway so then they would completely be voided out from that kill list and like while, while going over all this uh essentially you get like nanami and poor haibara and haibara ended up like killed at a mission and Nanami says that the people, like, on that land where they went to go take out this cursed spirit, they were worshipping it like a god. So, this was a really good example, like, following up, uh, that went with Ghetto's, like, mindset. Because here you have a, you have a, you know, their job, take care of these cursed spirits, are dangerous, they, they need to be taken out. And here you have these humans who ended up creating it, and they're worshipping it, and they're coming in to do, like, fix the problem... And one of Ghetto's friends, especially Hybaro, who was, like, this super chipper optimistic kid who was always, like, looking for, like, the most honest and, and like, most sincere, like, answers and, and meetings for things ends up getting killed in the process. And so, like, th that's just another nail in the coffin. And, in, like, I already thought that was enough. Because we already knew his mindset. We already knew stuff like the events with Rico and the way that he was, like, seeing the world, seeing all these, uh, these non-shamans. And then you got the Hybaro incident. It got even more like aggressive because it, it gets over to it, him on a mission and he finds like these children that have their own uh, cursed powers. They're pretty much just little shaman kids and they've been beaten, kept in cages. And you have these these non shamans who are just like treating these kids like garbage, chain, like all just confined and terrified. And like to them, and keep in mind to, to, to Ghetto, it's like to him, you have these children who don't, they don't have any p control over their power yet they're just scared they're unsure of what's going on um who knows how what like the full situation with their parents were but you have these guys who then like the solution was to like attack and hurt them age them and then talk about like how they should have killed them as, as babies and that's not gonna fly for ghetto because he's already mad that the, the the shamans his people are dying for like People who are not only the source of the problem, but are unappreciative of, of what they're doing. And you have these people, it's like, you know, we're trying to fix things that you guys caused. And not only are you treating us like, you know, throwaway garbage, but you're, you're persecuting, you know, members of us that are, you know, that can't control themselves. But, you, but 
the thing about it, like thinking about it, it's like, well, you know, the, 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 they can't control themselves. Like they're maybe they're dangerous. You know, they're, they're, you know, you get a, a kid with superpowers and they can't do anything yet. They can easily kill someone. Whereas, you know, you can kind of look at it that way. But at the same time, the non-shamans are the reason the cursed spirits exist in the first place. So if you get some incident where some like shaman kid accidentally hurts somebody with their power, it's like, yeah, that sucks. But these cursed spirits aren't caused by them. They're caused by you non-shamans. And it just on that day that that uh, Ghetto, the guru, just said, screw it. He was not having any of that. And he was going to rescue those kids who are actually, if you've read volume zero, those are two of the girls that are in his crew, funny enough. And on that day, like Satoru was, or not Satoru, uh, Ghetto was just not having it. Uh, he killed everybody in that village. Like they showed up and uh, 112 bodies were found. I actually really, I, I, I want to go look and look be, like any of the parts with Ghetto because like in this panel is like the cursed spirit he's using looks really cool. And I don't remember he's used that one before. But now you have Ghetto on the run. He's a he's a wanted criminal, and he's he's pretty much like a kill on sight. So the next chapter is going to be the final chapter of this flashback of the uh, past between Ghetto and Satoru, and seeing like their fated meetings. Uh, you know, once they're on the opposite ends of alignment. So legitimately, I think. Out of the new villains, out of the new villains for Shonen, I think Ghetto is currently the top. I think Ghetto is currently the top. I know a lot of people are going to push for, like, Kamora for My Hero Academia. He had a really good backstory. It was very entertaining. Uh, you know, obviously, like, him embracing the, the, the destruction he was causing and what was started as an accident. But, like, this, this reasoning and, the, the, like, the natural, like, flow of how this all, like, worked out, like, with the tone of Jujutsu, and it wasn't like some real dark past out of the middle of nowhere where it kind of like loosely ties into events. This was how everything has been established. You have a character who is against this establishment. All these other characters are just like, you know, it's it's not the non-shaman's fault for, you know, creating curses, but, you know, we can help them out, do our thing. But really, it's like, if that was the case... And the non-shamans, like, were appreciative of, of the shamans for what they're doing. That'd be a different story. But here you have them. There's a bunch of them that are happy about the problems they cause. They're, they're killing people that, uh, that are aligned with the shamans. And, you know, like with the, the, star, uh, the, the Time Vessel Association, like, after they killed Rico and they were just standing there and clapping. And you got these people, like, beating and caging up sh shaman children. And blaming them when they're not the cause of, like, the curses around them. It's just a shame. And it, it, it's sad. But at the same time, like, Ghetto's, like, entire meaning makes so much more sense now. Why he wants to bring back Ryuma uh, Sakuna. And why he's against, like, all of these non-shamans. You know, he, he pretty vilely hates them. We know that. And, like, the, the thought was that it was caused by Papagoro, but it wasn't. Like, it's... It's all like you know stemmed from events with them, but it it looks more just like the the complete and total like way that the non shamans like how they like are placed within the world, what they cause, and at the same time how they interact and treat the shamans, and it's just like a sad thing because you you have these guys who are the source of the problem. They are causing the problem. They are why things are so bad with these curses, but. They're bad on all fronts from it. Obviously, not all people are bad in the series, but like the mass amount that are just unappreciative and 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 making things worse. Like Ghetto's not having it. So I'm wondering for him because one of the questions about like his character of what like led him down of not only being a bad guy but being aligned with the curses is you know he wants to help bring back Ryuma uh, Sakuna, and I'm wondering if like his plan is to bring him back. And then use all the shamans that you know live after that part of the world to wage a war against Sukuna again, because they beat Sukuna the first time during what was called the Golden Age of the Shamans, where they had like just like the either the strongest or the most shamans at that time. So after that point, like they could get grouped up and then go if they take down Sukuna, and they're in a world where only uh, shamans exist, only people who can use their cursed energy. Then it's just a fight between the amount of curses left and any, like, made by dying shamans versus, you know, a bunch of shamans. You won't have just the endless supply created by, you know, non-shamans, which is, again, very just... It, it makes sense in his mindset. Obviously, it's very radical and drastic, 
But for, like, the reasoning of a villain is just, like, everything about his backstory leading up to this point, I think, is perfect. Like, it, it, it's so well done, so well constructed, it's so naturally flowing into the story. It's not like a, what's interesting, like, you get, like, character backstories, and they're, like, crazy, drastic, dark, and, like, wild. But, like, it just, like, this entire, like, story before, for Ghetto just felt like, like, a natural, like, style of events. And I thought that was just really neat about it. It didn't, it didn't tear away from, like, the style of it. Like, again, I used Tamora earlier. Tamora's backstory was really good, but it, like, it was such a change of pace and style for My Hero Academia. It was so much darker and vicious than it already was. Uh, and, yeah, but, like, like, Ghetto's is, it, it just felt like it was just going with the natural, like, style of events and, like, how one character in that can just turn and one character can really just go down this darker line. And unfortunately for them, that one character is one of the human special grades. So very intrigued to see this next because the next chapter is the last one of this flashback and Satoru and Ghetto are going to, you know, meet face to face in some event. And we know obviously they, they meet again in volume zero and in the, later in the current part of the story. But this is going to be very intriguing because I'm guessing it's going to be like the first time they meet after Ghetto has turned. Other than that, uh, comment below. Tell me what you thought about this chapter. I thought it was excellent. Uh, my favorite one for this week so far. I mean, the only ones I, I think that could possibly top it maybe is Eden Zero because, you know, that's it, some cool stuff is happening there. But I, I don't know if it can top, like, this chapter of Jitsu Kaisen this week. This was such a it's such a well, like, tying together event. It, it opened up more characters. You know, it killed off some really unfortunate kid who's just some optimistic little chipper boy. And it just pushed into the current, in my opinion, best villain in the new generation shonen. Other than that, comment below, thumbs up the video, put on the like button, and subscribe button, and check out my other videos. From that, I appreciate everyone who's already subscribed, and I thank you all for listening. Bye.